Hello everybody, my name is Abby and welcome to my channel. So I'm super excited about this because I decided to start a booktube channel two years ago and it has taken me this long to do it. So uh, part of that reason is because I am really bad with technology and it's taken me this long to figure out how to edit videos. Still don't really know, so please forgive the poor audio quality. Hopefully we can figure it out together in future videos, but I wanted to put this out there. This is going to be my July wrap-up. I read a lot of books in July, I read some good books in July, DNF'd a few books in July, but not even because they were super bad, um, but you'll see. So yeah, a couple things about me. I'm 26, I live in St. Louis, Missouri, and I work at the St. Louis Zoo as an education interpreter, so I teach people about the animals. I just recently got accepted for an internship to <clears throat> work with the ICM, the Institute for Conservation Medicine at the zoo. So they work basically on issues that affect both human and animal and also ecosystem health. So that's this idea of one health that we're all connected. So I'm really excited to start on that. And another important thing about me is that I don't like to stay in one place. So since I graduated college in 2018, I haven't stayed in one place longer than a year. So if you stick with me, you will get to see my journey. So I'm in St. Louis right now, but who knows where I'll be after this year. So with all that, um, let's actually get into the books. I'll see you guys at the end of the video. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so I have some updates. So, uh, a couple days ago, I finished The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. Here it is. And it is the third book in the Poppy War series. I'm not sure if that's the name of the series, but that was the first book. Um, it's a trilogy. It's a trilogy. And <clears throat> this trilogy mainly follows Rin, and she lives in a world that Kind of mirrors our own in some ways. Um, her country where she lives I was reading was kind of inspired by Song Dynasty China and she lives in a really poor um, area and she's raised by her aunt and uncle who really don't like her. They want to marry her off. Um, she doesn't want to get married and so the only way to escape her situation is to apply to the top military academy. Um, she gets in and she finds out that she has a connection with the phoenix god so she can kind of summon fire and uh, things go on from there. So this is, um, there's a lot of war, several different wars in this book, <laughs> in this trilogy. Um, and it's funny because this is like the only series or set of books that I've ever like really enjoyed and been super engaged in that is like so much about war um, and I'm usually not a huge fantasy person in general so I think that just goes to show like how amazing of an author she is. Characters are just so well developed and complicated. Um, there's no like very obviously good guy or very obviously bad guy. Especially as the series trilogy goes on. I mean, there are definitely people that you're like, yeah, they're, they're bad. But <laughs> um, it's just people are more complicated than that. This series is super dark. It is really, really rough. Um, talks a lot about trauma, PTSD, um, and has some parallels to some of the horrific things that happened. Um, well, I think I was reading it was kind of about the Sino... You know, Japanese War, but I am so, it's just, it, uh, definitely look up trigger warnings if you're going to read this book. I will say, I really liked it. Um, this one was a little slower of a read for me than the other two, but I hadn't read the other two in like two years, so some of it was just me catching up and like getting back into the flow of things. I would give this book about 3.5 stars. Um, I did really enjoy it. I was so into it and just so like invested in the characters so I would definitely recommend this book even if 
who are not a big fantasy or kind of war person, um, as I'm not. So then I have two books that I DNF'd, and it's not necessarily because I think they're bad, it's just because of timing, really. So the first one is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Um, this is just, it's another fantasy book, and it kind of, I mean, it's, I guess it's kind of like, oops, sorry, it's kind of like an urban fantasy, like, dystopian kind of thing, or alternate universe kind of thing, um, with, like, an oppressive regime, and I think even though it's in a lot of ways super, super different from The Burning God, um, it was just a little too similar <laughs> in those ways, and I was not really feeling it. Um, it seemed a little more like, like the Poppy War, Burning God, all that seemed very groundbreaking to me, and this one seemed a little more like other books that I've read. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad, it just didn't really capture my attention, and I, I don't know, I mean, I didn't get super far, so, um, other people might really enjoy this book. I know it's a popular book. Um, but I did check this book out from the library. I checked all these books out from the library because I never really read a book more than once and I don't have the money to buy a bunch of books. Um, so I do have to return it. So I'm just not going to finish it. And then the last book, which I'm also DNFing, is called What's Your Pronoun? And Beyond He and She, and it's by Dennis Barron. And this one was super interesting to me. It's a nonfiction book, and it kind of goes over the history of the search for and usage of, um, you could say, like a third pronoun, a neutral pronoun, or just a, a pronoun that is not inherently gendered. Um, and the history goes back a lot farther than I think a lot of people think, um, than Shakespeare's time, probably even before that. And so he goes over the history, I think he goes over kind of the linguistic side of things and modern usage and um, controversies and stuff. And I do think this book is really interesting. It was a very easy read um, as I was going through it, but I recently started taking a linguistics course just for fun online. And um, since this one is also a little bit linguistics-y, I didn't want to double dip. <laughs> so um, I might pick this one up later, but right now I want to focus on my class. So I'm also going to be returning this book. So those are the three updates that I have for now, and I'll see you guys later. So I've read three more books so far. first one is Mooncakes by Wendy Zhu and Suzanne Walker, and this is a YA graphic novel and our protagonist in this book is a witch, but she's still learning how to use her magic. She lives with her two grandmothers, who I believe are in a relationship, and she is also queer, which is pretty cool. There is a lot of representation in this book. There's also a character who uses they-them pronouns, and our protagonist also has hearing aids, and she does talk about her experience with them and how society has perceived her as well. But the story basically follows or starts when she is in the woods and runs into an old childhood friend who is also a werewolf. And this friend is in the woods because there is apparently a demon in the woods. And the only way to release the demon is to use wolf magic and some bad people are trying to capture them, the friend, to use this magic. So they team up with help from the grandmothers and set out to fix this whole situation. So it was a super cute book. It did have a romance in it, which was cute, although I thought it moved a little quickly. I didn't really see a lot of the chemistry. There just wasn't really a lot of time with the two characters before they got together, and I would have liked to see that, but it is just a very short book in general. I don't actually know if it has a sequel or if it's a standalone, but I would have read it if it had been broken up into more books and the romance had been spread out a little more, but that's just me. I gave this book three stars, or no, three and a half stars, because it was really cute, it was a fun read, super fast read, and the illustration was also really beautiful. I really enjoyed the pictures and the colors. This is one I'm looking for in particular. Oh, I can't find it, but that's a spoiler. Okay. 
but yeah, there's just a view of some of the illustrations. So yeah, that was this book. And then the next book I read was The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. I loved this book. I gave it four stars. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. It surprised me. It's not the genre that I would usually go with. I don't even really know what genre this is. It has fantasy or magic in it, but it's also... Well, I'll tell you what it's about. So basically, our protagonist lives in a world that is similar to ours, except that there are magical creatures, magical people, but these magical people are treated as second-class citizens. They are not given the same opportunities as non-magical people, and there is a lot of prejudice against them. There's all these signs around the city, the villages, that they see something, say something. And our protagonist works at a company which goes to different orphanages for, specifically for magical kids, and checks them out and makes sure that they're following all the rules. And part of that is to make sure that the kids are being treated okay, but part of it is also to make sure that the non-magical people are quote-unquote safe, because these kids are still seen as very dangerous, even though they're just kids. And so he gets sent to this highly classified orphanage that is said to have really dangerous kids, and he's really terrified when he goes, but of course the children do kind of start to win him over, and the guy who runs the orphanage also kind of starts to win him over as well. There is a queer romance in this one as well, and it was so great and so sweet, and I did tear up a little bit. It was wonderful. This book is a little cheesy in my opinion. Well, it's very cheesy, which normally isn't my thing, but honestly I think it was what I needed at the moment. There's just a lot of monologues or uh, moments where characters are talking about how, you know, everyone matters and everyone should be treated equally, and but in ways that are kind of like cliche and a little cheesy, but honestly it is important stuff, and I do think this book kind of alludes to the struggles that queer people, um, people of any minority really have faced in this, in the Western world, and um, it was just great to see. Honestly, it was nice to have that, um, to see these people just standing up so blatantly for these issues, and um, to see the love that they all have for each other. So, gave this four stars, and the book that I finished most recently, I also gave four stars, but for a very different reason, and this was The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. This, I think, is my favorite Ruth Ware book so far. I loved it. I don't normally give mysteries, so this is a mystery. Um, I don't normally give mysteries four stars because I guess a lot of the ones I've read haven't really been up to my standards in terms of how well I thought they were written, and also how, uh, I guess, hard to figure out the, the mystery was, um, and how realistic it was in some senses. I mean, most of them aren't super realistic, and I'm not really expecting that, but to some extent I guess I am. Um, there at least needs to be no plot holes. <laughs> um, mystery, especially murder mystery, is really one of my, if not my favorite genre. I just have really high standards, but I, I will still read like a three-star book because it's a good time. Um, but this one was a four-star, and this one follows a girl who, well, she's a, a young woman who is living in Brighton, I believe, on the pier, and she is a tarot reader. Even though she doesn't really believe in it, that's how she makes her money. She is very poor. She's all alone. Her mother's passed away. She doesn't know her father, and she is really struggling to pay all her bills and to make things worse she owes some people money and they are starting to threaten her life. She receives a letter in the mail saying that she is going to be one of the beneficiaries of the will of this woman, Mrs. Westaway, who recently passed away, who is apparently her grandmother. The only problem is she knows her grandmother um, 
who has also passed away, but is not the same Mrs. Westaway. She's a different Mrs. Westaway, they, but they have the same last name, basically. So there was some sort of mistake, but she decides, because she's desperate, that she is going to go anyway and get this money to save herself and pay off her debt. But when she gets there, she finds out that things are a lot more complicated than that, and there are a lot of secrets, and it unfolds from there. And it was so good. I think I read this in less than 24 hours. It was just super engaging and kept me reading, and the ending was really surprising. I didn't guess it, so that was really nice and refreshing. And that is why I gave this book four stars. So that's the last one for now, and I'll see you with the next update. So last night I finished Girl and Ice by Erica Theramsic. I hope that's how you say her last name. And this book is about a girl or a woman who is a linguist. And so that's part of the reason that I picked it up, because I have been studying, kind of self-studying linguistics. And um, she's a linguist. She specializes in Old Norse languages, I think, although that's not super important in this book. She has severe anxiety. She has her structure that she likes, her schedule, and she doesn't ever really go to do like field research or go um, out to different places because of her extreme anxiety. Whereas her twin brother, um, he is a climate scientist and he went to Greenland, to the middle of nowhere in Greenland, to, for like a year or more to study the ice cores and figure out what's going on with climate change and all that. Well, her brother is found one day out on, in the snow, frozen to death. And it's declared a suicide. Of course, she's heartbroken. But then, sometime later, she gets a call from his boss, I guess maybe his PI, saying that they had found a girl, an eight-year-old girl, frozen in the ice in Greenland, and when they thawed her body out, she came to life. And she is speaking a language that he doesn't know, and none of the native people that he's spoken to in Greenland seem to know what language she's speaking. So he wants the protagonist to come up to Greenland and talk to her and figure out what's going on. So, of course, at first she is really against this. She feels super anxious about going there, going out to the middle of nowhere in the freezing cold. But she really wants to find out what, what really happened to her brother. And along with some other pressures, she basically decides to go. So I gave this book three stars. I think it was well written, it was an, a fast paced book, like engaging, I just it's not the type of story that I really wanted, I thought it was going to be more of a murder mystery that's not to say that it's not a mystery but I guess from the synopsis I had thought that someone died while she was there and then she was trying to figure it out that's not what happens. Um, but of course it is a big mystery. She is trying to figure out what happened to her brother and what the deal with this girl is. And so in that sense, it if you are looking for a mystery, this might work for you, might not. Um, it just wasn't exactly what I wanted at the time, but like I said, it was still an engaging read and a fast-paced read, and I read it really quickly. So that is girl and ice. So, after two whole years, or more than two years, of what, in retrospect, was probably just luck, uh, and trying to be safe, I got COVID. <laughs> and, yeah, I mostly feel better. Well, I don't feel sick anymore. Obviously, I'm still a little congested. But I'm tired. I've just been in bed all day. Like, I... I'm going back to work tomorrow if I test negative, and we'll see. So, yeah. Sorry I look like a mess, too. Uh, but I did finish two books. So, we have The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. 
This one is about a woman who is, she struggles with depression. She also is just having a really bad time. Um, she's not happy with her life. She has a lot of regrets. And this first day in particular that we follow her, it just seems like everything's going wrong in her life. She's losing everyone and everything that brings her joy, and she decides to end her life. So that happens at the very beginning. They don't describe how she does it or anything, um, but that would still be a trigger warning, I guess, to look up, <clears throat> depending on how comfortable you are with that kind of stuff. But she wakes up, and she's in this library, and basically she finds out that this library gives her the chance to live in an alternate universe or a parallel universe where she made a different choice. So she can go back, or not go back, but she can say, I want to live in the time where I didn't drop out of the band that I was in, for example. And it doesn't she doesn't go back to the past, but she goes to the present as if she had made that different choice. And she's trying to find the universe that she wants to live in, basically. Um, this book, as you might be able to guess, does kind of cover those topics of, like, why... live and, uh, and, and, you know, is it important to have regrets or is it important to live in the present? You know, all of those kind of things. Um, I think it was an easy read. I enjoy, I like um, categories and just when things fit into little boxes like this. So I kind of liked that aspect of it, that we're just getting to see these different alternate universes and stuff. Um, and I liked the character, the main character. Um, I know this book, some people like it, some people don't. I would give it a three star. I don't think it was groundbreaking for me um sort of the messages and I didn't feel like I had a whole paradigm shift while reading this book but I still enjoyed it okay and then the next book I finished was Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas and this one I really liked I'm gonna say 3.5 stars I don't think that like, I already can think about problems that other people would have with this book, which is something that I need to stop doing, I think, because I've, it's probably a sign I've been watching too much booktube. Um, because what really matters is what I thought, right? Or what each individual person thinks. And I really enjoyed it. Um, for example, there were a couple characters that, like, never were fully fleshed out. Like, they kept saying this one character's name, and I was like, who is he again? Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I liked the atmosphere. I liked that we didn't really have a grasp of what this whole house and what, uh, the campus looked like. There wasn't a map and they didn't describe it very like accurately or it was hard to picture. Anyway, I'll tell you what it was about. So Catherine House is a university kind of, I mean, you do, you get a degree at the end. It's three years, but and it's uh, free, but it's very, very secretive, and there's never any media or anything inside the house. Even once the students get accepted, they're never allowed to leave. Well, they are. They're not allowed to leave for the three years while they're there. They don't have phones. They're not allowed to really contact the outside world unless they build up points, which you get... I don't remember how you get points. I think you can work like a job 
at the school and there's some other ways you can get points maybe grades or something but it's so expensive that you basically can't contact anyone from the outside world and so you're very isolated for three years and there's a lot of typical tracks I guess it seems like um they have yeah, like chemistry and art history and different things. But then there's also a study that was kind of controversial in the past and you don't really know what it is until later in the book, so I won't spoil it. But that's when things start to get a little more sketchy is when you learn that there may be some studies um, or experiments that have been happening in the past at the university that may still be happening that may not be completely ethical and um it's all very mysterious and yeah I don't think that this book was very scary like for me not until the very end where there are parts where I was kind of like oh that's a little weird uh <laughs> but I still really enjoyed it I thought it was it was fun a fun time I honestly just really liked the friendship that the characters had. There's a main friend group in here, and I, it just made me miss being in college. And as much as there were some really crappy times in college, I miss having that core group of people and just feeling a bit more carefree about, about certain things. So, yeah, 3.5 stars. I really liked it. So I am unfortunately going to be DNFing this book, A Song of Race and Ruins, by Roseanne A. Brown. Um, I know a lot of people have had really good things to say about this book, and I'm sure it really is good and that a lot of people would like it. I just am not in the mood for fantasy, especially not a YA fantasy, with the sort of usual writing style that I feel they tend to have. and having to learn a whole world, all that world building and everything, I just, I'm not really in the mood for that right now. But the premise sounded really interesting, so this book takes place in a world, uh, the region is called Sonande, and we have two point of views, so one point of view is from a boy named Malik, and he has two sisters, the three of them are from an area that was taken over by the ruling party, and so their people are seen as kind of less than by the other people in the region, or in the land, and um, in the kingdom, and they are trying to get to the main city of Zoran to start a new life and uh, help get their mother and I believe grandmother um, a better life as well. But while they are at the gates, they run into some trouble. The youngest sister ends up making a wish that leads to sort of disastrous consequences. They basically awaken this spirit that tries to take the sister. Malik makes a deal with him that he will do anything the spirit wants if the spirit will just let his sister go. So, in return for letting his sister go, the spirit asks Malik to kill the princess. And then the other point of view is the princess's point of view, which I didn't get a lot of her storyline by the time I stopped reading. There was some stuff that I read on the inside cover, so I guess it's not a spoiler. I don't really want to say it, though, because... It felt a little spoilery because I was 50 pages in and I didn't know about it. But <laughs> um, I know that the main boy, Malik, does suffer from anxiety and panic attacks. So I like that, as someone who suffers from anxiety and panic attacks, I liked that, uh, that, that we had a character that experienced those things. And um, the princess suffers from migraines. And I'm sorry, I should know her name as well. Her name is Karina. That's right. Okay. Um, 
The other thing I really liked about this book is that the inside, before our nice little map, the author put some trigger warnings. So I thought that was very thoughtful of her. That was pretty cool. And like I said, I think, uh, so I read 50 pages. I just wasn't flying through it as much as I wanted to. Um, like I said, wasn't really in the mood for the fantasy, but um, if you are a fantasy person, then maybe you would like this more than me. So I am going to be DNFing this one. All right, so that's the end of my July wrap up. Let me know if you read any of those books and what your thoughts were, especially the books that I didn't finish. Let me know if you think I should try again. Um, let me know if you have any recommendations. My taste right now is kind of all over the place. Um, and maybe I'll do another video later that kind of explains my taste a little more in my top books and stuff. But yeah, oh, and if you have any ideas for other types of videos that you want to see from me, let me know. Even if you don't have any ideas or any of all that stuff that I just mentioned, I would love to meet you guys. So feel free to introduce yourself in the comments. I would love some booktube friends. All right, thank you guys so much for watching my video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!